Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's part three of the Butterick 5951 sew along. Today we're going to be making the bodice, so let's get started. We're on to step 14, which is pin bodice back sections to bodice front at neck and shoulder edges, matching symbols, clipping back neck edge where necessary, adjust the gathers, baste, stitch, pivoting at inner small circle as shown, trim neck seam, press neck seam towards collar and shoulder seams towards back. So we're basically going to be sewing in a right angle. That is the collar piece that we have clipped into, reinforced the edge and clipped into earlier. There's our gathering stitches. This is the shoulder seam and neckline that we have just worked on on the back pieces. So I'm going to pin one of these together and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what we're aiming for. This is the part of the collar that we had clipped into earlier. We've got the shoulder gathers here for the front bodice. And then there's like a right angle here, which is the back neckline that we stay stitched and then we've sewn the collar to it. Now I actually find it easier to do this in two passes. So I like to put my gathers in here and sew to the corner and back stitch. And then I like to take my work from, uh, from under the machine and reposition everything so that I can sew in the collar to the back neckline to make sure that I don't end up with any puckers in this right angle here. So I'm gonna do the other side and I'll show you what I mean and how I do it as I go. I have pinned the bodice front to the bodice back at the shoulder seam. I have matched up the gathering points. So this is the one we reinforced earlier. You can see I've clipped into that one. And then this is the other gathering point here. So I've matched those up on the front and the back. Then there is a notch in the middle and I've pinned that into place. I've then pulled the gathering stitches to distribute the gathering between the uh, two match points. And I'm gonna sew a 5 eighths of an inch back stitching here to this match point here, the small circle that we've reinforced and clipped to. I'm going to back stitch at this point so that I can then take the work out from under the sewing machine, remove the gathering threads, and then I will re reposition everything so I can sew this edge here to the back neckline. I find it easier to do it in two passes rather than trying to pivot here or pin everything in place and pivot there and then um, readjust and do it that way. So I'm going to stitch, back stitch here, stitch all the way to the corner point, the, the point that we've clipped to earlier, back stitch there, and then I will rearrange and sew this particular line here. I also find that it just reinforces this clipped point as well. So I'm going to get that done and then I'll show you what moving this around and pinning this into place looks like. <laughs> Believe it or not in all this I have sewn that seam into place so I'm now going to remove my gathering stitches or I'm going to try to remove them. Like I say last time the other time it came out really easily Ooh, is this time as well so that's one set gone and the second set gone so I'm just going to take out the under threads. Okay so I've sewn up to and backstitched at that pivot point. Now I can reposition the fabric and you want to make sure because there's a lot of excess in this area and we want to make sure that we are not creating any tucks or puckers. So this is the edge of the collar and I'm lining it up with the stay stitched back neck edge here and I'm going to pin it into place. If you need to clip into the back neck edge to make it fit the collar, you can do so. Clip up to, but not through your stay stitching. But for me, this fabric is behaving itself and lying flatly and fitting in where I need it to. So just pinning this all into place. And you can see why we had to clip earlier to release this bit of fabric to make it go around that corner. So we're gonna position everything so that it's nice and flat and all the bulk is towards the shoulder seam that we've just sewn. And I'm gonna start my stitching at this small circle here, 
back stitch there and stitch at 5 8 of an inch to the back edge here then I can double check and make sure that everything is lying nice and flatly back stitch at the beginning and at the end make sure that you are putting your needle down exactly into that small circle if you had just put your needle down and pivoted here this would be you, that would be what you're, you're you're aiming for you want to start the stitching at exactly the point that we finished the stitching in the last pass so I'm going to stitch this and I'll show you what it looks like and when we're done this is what you should end up with so we're going to press our back darts towards the center we are going to press the shoulder seams towards the back and we're going to press the neck edge towards the collar I'm going to actually this is I've only done the outer I'm going to repeat all these steps for the lining to attach the back of the lining to the front of the lining but that's what we need to press we also need to press our front darts again towards the center as you know I like to do as many processes at the sewing machine before I have to get up and go to the ironing board so that's why I haven't pressed anything as yet so all the darts towards the center shoulder seams towards the back collar seam and neck edge towards the collar I've got everything pressed and I am now going to deviate from the pattern a little bit more. So the next thing it wants us to do in the pattern is to sew up the side seams and then it wants us to prepare the lining in the same manner, which we've been doing at the same time. But it then wants us to sew the lining to the outer around the front neck edge and then under stitch and I find that this is a lot easier when the side seams are open. I'm going to pin my front, my outer to my lining all around the front neck edge. You may want to mark in your stitching points. I have marked in the big circle that we're stitching to at the the, the V of the front neckline but you might want to mark in your actual stitching lines just to make sure that you're pivoting on the right point if you have trouble following the seam lines it's a trick that I do use quite frequently so I'm going to pin from the neck edge down to the V and round back to the other neck edge I am actually going to put the zip in mine all the way up to the back of the neck edge the pattern would have you finish the back of the collar with hooks and eyes I don't particularly like that I find them fiddly to get dressed in by myself so I'm going to put my my zip all the way up to the back of the collar so I'm not going to sew around the back edge of the collar at a right angle as it shows in the pattern instructions so I'm going to pin the lining to the outer all the way around the neck edge and I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll sew at five eighths of an inch as I mentioned I have so uh, marked in my stitching lines if you want to double check you can put your paper pattern against your bodice and you can see that the center front point is quite low so I have marked that in and then I have marked in the stitching lines from the pattern and I'm going to stop stitching I'm going to start and stop stitching about an inch away from the back edge so that I can sandwich my zipper between the two layers a little bit later so I'm going to start stitching about an inch in back stitch there stitch all the way down to my point pivot here and then stitch back up this side and again stop stitching about an inch away from the back edge so again I can sandwich my zipper in here neatly later. Okay so as you can see here I've sewn the neckline all the way down to my marked V point which feels very low but it's not don't, don't worry it is correct then you need to slash up to but not through your stitching which will then enable you to under stitch the two layers and you'll need to do it in two passes and this is the reason that I haven't sewn up the side seams yet is because I find it a lot easier to manipulate the bodice with the side seams open to do the under stitching so I'm going to take the lining fabric and move it over with all of the seam allowance I prefer to not press first I find it slightly easier to do it this way and uh, then press afterwards because the understitching helps me press so I've got all of the lining over to this side with the seam allowance and I'm going to understitch about one or two millimeters eighth of an inch into the lining side stitching the seam allowance to the lining to help everything roll to the inside and you will need to back stitch and finish at the point and then restart your stitching so we're going to do both sides and because of the way that I like to install my zips as I mentioned I've left an inch of the neckline here unstitched and I'm going to understitch to an inch away from that stitching line so two inches away from the raw edge and that will help me to get my zip in sandwiched in later and then I'll be able to finish the neckline off neatly so I'm going to do my understitching and I'll show you what that looks like I think you can just about see here I've got the understitching in and that has stitched 
the seam allowance to the lining of the bodice. So I'm now going to sew up my side seams for both the lining and the outer. Then we can go over and press everything. Okay, I have all of my side seams pinned together and I'm now going to sew them at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I have pressed open the side seams and the neckline and the bodice is pretty much finished. We need to work on the sleeves now. This is a good time to try on your bodice if you can get someone to pin you into the back of it to, to test the fit. If you need to adjust the side seams this is the perfect time to do so. This one fits me really well so I am going to start work on the sleeves. As ever if you have any questions at all please let me know in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!